Question two, uh, we're told to use the first fit bin packing algorithm to determine how many numbers, how, how the numbers lifted, lift, uh, listed above can be packed into bins of size two. So what we're going to do is we're using the first fit um, algorithm. So let's have a go at that. So part A. Um, I'm going to list the bins, so I'm going to say bin 1, bin 2, bin 3. I don't know how many bins I'm going to need, but I'm going to go to bin 4. I can always rub this out afterwards. Now, we know that in each of the bins are of size 2. So I, I like to put a 2 in brackets here, just to remind me how big each bin is. So this is how we do these. We're taking them as we see them. That's the first fit. We take them as we see them. So the 0 0.6 here, can that go here? Of course it can. So 0 0.6, you've got 1.4 left. The 1.5, can it go here? No, because it would be bigger than 2. So the 1.5 must go here. Then we go to the 1.6. Can it go here? No, it would be bigger than 2. Can it go here? No. So we're going to put the 1.6 here. Now 0 0.2. That can obviously fit in here. 0 0.2 must therefore go there. 0 0.4, well that can fit in here as well. Because in total so far, we've got 0 0.8 and 1.2. Can this, where does the 0 0.4 go? Well that can fit here as well. So, so far we've got 1.6 in the top row. Now the 0 0.5, can that fit here? No, but it can certainly fit here to make this bin up to a full bin. The 0 0.7, well it can't go here because there isn't enough space, there's only 0 0.4 space. It can't go here either, so the 0 0.7 must go down here. 0 0.1, well that can fit up here, so the 0 0.1 goes up here. And so far, you can see we're at 1.7 here. The 0 0.9, well it can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, uh, so it must therefore go here, so the 0 0.9 must go there. And the 0 0.3, so be super careful here. The 0 0.3, can it go here? Well, in total, so far, we've got 1.7. So the 0 0.3 can indeed go there to make this a full bin. So um, there we go. We have sorted these by the first fit uh, bin packing algorithm to determine how they uh, fit into the bin sizes. Now, then it says, it says the, the list of numbers is to be sorted into descending order. Use the, now, quick sort. You must use the algorithm they gave. To obtain a sorted list, you must make your pivots clear. So let's do part B then. Okay, let's go off for part B. Right, so part B, we're using the quick sort algorithm to sort these into order. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write them down as they are above. So 0 0.6, uh, 1.5, 1.6, 0.2. So 1.5, 1.6, 0.2. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, so 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and then we've got 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0 0.3. So 0 0.1, 0 0.9, and 0 0.3. Okay, I've actually uh, made them a bit uh, wide there. I'm going to make them a bit closer together so that I've got a column where I can clearly state my pivots in this column. So it must, it's important you state your pivot or else you won't get the mark. So the pivot number is the middle number. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. The middle of those always happens at uh, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six here. That will be the middle number in this case because there are five numbers here and five numbers here. There isn't a unique middle and we always go one up from that. So 0 0.5 is our first pivot. So we write 0 0.5 as our pivot here. So what I do at that point is I'm going to write every number and because we're going descending, we're going descending, so we're going from biggest to smallest, I'm going to write every number before 0 0.5 as it comes up here. So I'm going to write, this is bigger, so I'm going to write 0 0.6. This is bigger, so I'm going to write 1.5. This is bigger, so I'm going to write 1.6. This is not bigger. This is not bigger. This is bigger, so I'm going to write 0 0.7. Uh, that's not bigger. 0 0.9 is bigger, so I'm going to write 0 
and 0 0.3 is not bigger. Then what I'm going to do is the thing I pivoted, I'm now going to put it in a square box to show myself it's fixed there. So that is now fixed, that's 0 0.5. And then as the numbers come up, I'm going to write all the ones that were smaller. So the 0 0.2, the 0 0.4, so 0 0.2, the 0 0.4, the 0 0.1, the 0 0.3, so 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Then we're going to find a pivot here and a pivot here. There are four numbers here, there's no unique middle, so this one's going to be my pivot. I'm going to circle a new pivot. There are one, two, three, four, five numbers here. The third is the unique pivot. So my pivots in this case, which I'm going to state, are the 1.6 and the 0 0.1. So I'm going to do a pivot on this data here. So I'm going to write anything bigger than 1.6 um, in front of it. So that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. So 1.6 must go here, and I'm going to put a square around it to say it's now fixed in place. Then I'm going to write all the other numbers as they come up. So the 0 0.6, the 1.5, the 0 0.7, the 0 0.9. Remember the 0 0.5 with a box around it is fixed. That's why I put the box around it. It never changes its position now. And here I'm going to write anything bigger than 0 0.1 as you come. So 0 0.2 is, 0 0.4 is, 0 0.3 is, and the 0 0.1 must be therefore at the end. And I'm going to put a square box around that now to say it's fixed. Okay, so now I've got four numbers here, the middle of four numbers, there's no unique one, that now must be the new pivot, and there are three numbers here, so the second must be the new pivot. So I'm going to write 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 as my pivots in this column, and we're going to pivot just like we've done before, so we're going to pivot on these. Okay, so I'm going to write the 1.6, I'm going to write the 0 0.5, and I'm going to write the 0 0.1 there as fixed, fixed place like that. Now, for this pivot, anything bigger than 0 0.7 will be written in front of it. So I'm going to write the 1.5 and the 0 0.9. The 0 0.7 is therefore there, and therefore 0 0.6 must be written after it. A square goes on it now to say it's fixed. Anything bigger than 0 0.4 goes in front of it. Well, nothing is, so the 0 0.4 get, goes there, and the 0 0.2 and the 0 0.3 go there. Okay, and that now gets a square around it to say it's fixed. Now we're going to pivot these two, the middle of these two is the second one, the middle of these two is the second one like that. So I'm going to write the 1.6, I'm going to write the 0 0.7, I'm going to write the 0 0.5, I'm going to write the 0 0.4, and I'm going to write the 0 0.1 there, the ones that I've previously pivoted and are fixed like that. And now we're going to perform our, our last uh, quick sort. So anything bigger than that is written here, that's done. And that now is fixed. Um, obviously, sorry, I could have pivoted on the 0 0.6 here because it was the only one. So I should have actually written the 0 0.6 as a pivot, the 0 0.9 and the 0 0.3. Should have written those as my pivots. That now obviously is on its own. So that one must be um, fixed. And this one here, I'm going to write anything bigger than 0 0.3, of which is nothing. So the 0 0.3 goes there, I fix it in place, and the 0 0.2 is there. Now, there's no need to do another quick sort at the end. Because there's only one number there, it can't move at all. So now we are done at this stage, and they are in descending order. The nice thing to do is to just state that the quick sort is complete, just to show that you are done at that point. Okay, then we're going up here. It says, apply for part C, the first fit decreasing bin packing algorithm to your ordered list, to the one you've just ordered in part B, to pack the numbers into bins of size two. So it's exactly like part A, apart from now we're using the numbers in this list. So what I'm gonna do for part C, the very first thing I'm gonna do is write the list out in descending order. So 1.6, 1.5, 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. That's the list, so I can refer to that list. We're putting it in bins, so we're going to put bin 1, bin 2, bin uh, 3, let's say, and let's go to bin 4. We don't know how many we're going to need. We know they're each size 2, so I put 2 in brackets there just to remind me the sizes of the bins. And now I'm going to use this list to put them in. Okay, that one first must go here, 1.6. That one can't go in bin 1, so it must go in bin 2, so I'll put the 1.5 there. 
0 0.9 can't go here because there's 0 0.4 space, can't go here because there's 0 0.5 space, so must go here, tick. 0 0.7 can't go here, can't go here, so must go here. 0 0.6 can't go here, can't go here, and it can't go here either because these add up to 1.6, it would take us to 2.2, so 0 0.6 must go here. Now 0 0.5 can't go here, but can go here into bin 2, so put it there. 0 0.4 can go here to give us a complete bin. So that's complete now, and that's complete. Okay, 0 0.3, well that can't go here and or here because they're complete, but it can obviously go here to give me 1.9 in total. 0 0.2, it can't go here because I've got 1.9, but can of course go here. And the 0 0.1, well that can fit perfectly here to give me another complete um, bin. So I've got three complete bins and a fourth uh, bin there. Okay, it says determine whether your answer to part C uh, of part D uses the minimum number of bins you must justify your answer. Well, the minimum number of bins, the theoretical lower bound, the lower bound for the minimum number of bins, well, how would we get that? Well, it would be the sum of all the things we've got to fit in divided by 2. So what we would do is we would do 1.6, add 1.5, add 0 0.9, add 0 0.7, add 0 0.6, add 0 0.5, add 0 0.4, add 0 0.3, add 0 0.2, add 0 0.1. And we would divide all of that by the size of each bin, which is of size 2. We do fraction of 1.6, add 1.5, add 0 0.9, add 0 0.7, add 0 0.6, add 0 0.5, add 0 0.4, add um, 0 0.3, add 0 0.2, add 0 0.1, and we divide all of that by 2, and it gives us 17.5, it gives us 3.4, so 3.4, which you have to round up, you can't have 3.4 bins, so that's 4 bins. So the lowest it could possibly be is 4 bins, so the answer is yes, Part C gives the minimum number of bins. Number of bins. And we're done for this question.